Hi and welcome to Next Please, a tool that introduces a new approach to scene navigation and object selection in 3ds Max. I'm going to show you how this works. I have installed the script and have customized my user interface under the keyboard tab. In the category Next Please, I have assigned the left arrow to the previous uh, function of Next Please. I have assigned the right arrow to the Next and I have a couple of shift arrow combinations for accessing some of the additional features of Next Please and the down arrow to open the floating dialog that has all the uh, settings. Let's create a couple of objects in the scene, for example some teapots, some spheres, omni lights, couple of uh, let's say target cameras looking at uh, the scene from different angles. We could add a free spot so we don't have only only lights and a um, couple of helpers and a dummy. Normally when you work with 3ds Max you select objects in the viewport by clicking on them holding control and alt to change the selection or using the select by name dialog or the floater and uh, potentially also the uh, layer manager to navigate the scene and find objects by name. But typically when you're working with hundreds or thousands of objects, you're concentrating on objects that have something in common. For example, uh, they have uh, the same material, or similar properties, or the same base class, or the same modifier on top, and so on. And you want to quickly switch uh, the selection to the next object of the same type. For example, if I have selected a teapot and hit the right arrow, next please selects the next object by class teapot. Right now, next please is running an automatic mode, which means that it tries to figure out based on the current selection and the settings in the user interface what is the most l uh, likely thing that we want to do. If I continue holding the right arrow, I'm going to cycle through all the objects that have the same class. If I select a sphere, I'm going to cycle between the spheres. If I select an omni light, I'll select only between the omni lights, but never the uh, free spot that we created, because uh, it's not of class omni light; it's of super class light. We can uh, hit the down arrow to open the floater. Right now, it shows that we're in automatic mode, and we could switch the uh, selection mode to object category which is the superclass in this case if I select an omni light and then cycle I'm going to select the three omni lights and the spotlight because currently we are running by category light the uh, status uh, bar at the bottom is also showing the same information next please category is light and it took zero milliseconds to figure out the selection in the user interface we have some menus with options we also have the button update, which uh, populates the list without actually navigating to the next object. If I select a sphere and hit the button update, it uh, looks at the current settings, okay, object category. It figures out the category of the current object, doesn't go to the next one. It just populates the list with all the objects that are of category geometry. If I uh, hit the select all button, it's going to select all the objects that of that uh, category. If I select a light, hit update and select all, it's going to select all the lights. And on the list I can jump to any of those uh, by name. The automatic mode, which currently is assigned to the shift down arrow, so if I hit that button, it's going to switch next please to automatic, goes from the uh, most specific to the most general um, properties. For example, if we select all scene objects and start hitting the right arrow, even without anything selected, it starts going from the first object ever created and cycling to the whole scene. Every single object is going to be revisited. And in automatic mode, it actually uh, tries to figure out what is the highest priority of the possible modes and uses that one. 
we can also switch explicitly to a category. For example, if you want to select only lights or only helpers, let's say we switch the mode to helpers, hit the right arrow, and we get the first point, the second point, the third point, the first dummy, the second dummy, and then again. So uh, we can lock next please to a specific mode and uh, cycle between the objects of that mode. We can also cycle the modes quickly without even the dialog open. If I hold shift and use the left arrow and right arrow, I can go between all the possible supported modes. And if I hit shift down arrow, uh, it opens, it sets basically the uh, um, mode to automatic in order to uh, be able to uh, let next please decide what the next selection will be. We also have the buttons duplicated, so we can click in the user interface and it's also possible to assign all the keyboard shortcuts to a toolbar and press the icons there. The um, user interface settings, for example, the current uh, status of uh, the uh, command panel also plays a role uh, when figuring uh, out the automatic mode. For example, if I select the teapot and use the next please, as we know, it's now running by class teapot. If I switch to modify panel, and, and uh, go to the right or to the left of the selection, it switches to base object class teapot because it sees that the modify panel is open and that the teapot is the current selection and uh, switches the mode to uh, use the modify stack, um, which is the base object class. I can force this mode by selecting from the list or let the automatic mode figure it out. I'll switch it to automatic for now and I'll add some modifiers. For example, I can add a bent modifier to this teapot, another bent modifier to this teapot, uh, then uh, another bent modifier to uh, this sphere, and then I'll also add a mesh select on top. Uh, let's see what will happen now. If I select one of the teapots and go to the base object and use the right arrow, to go through all the teapots by base class, you'll notice that the modify panel is being constantly kept at the base object, even though there are modifiers on top. If I select the modifier level and hit the right arrow in automatic mode, the mode switches automatically to the modifier class bent, and now it starts going between all the bent modifiers and keeps the selection at the uh, corresponding modifier class, even though there are more modifiers on top of the stack. I can uh, also use the uh, mode uh, base object instance or the modifier instance in order to jump between objects that uh, share a specific modifier or base object. For example, if I grab this uh, teapot and instance it a couple of times, and then keep, uh, for example, I can still add a modifier here in order to uh, show the difference. If I um, have a teapot and the uh, modifier stack mode set to, for example, modifier um, instance, if I, if I haven't selected the modifier and hit the right arrow, I get a red line which says the current selection is not valid. If I switch to the modifier bend and hit the right arrow, now we're running by modifier instance bend and it's going to cycle only between the four instances of the same modifier, but we'll never go to the modifiers bend that are not instance of that one. I would have to switch again to modifier class in order to go through all the bends. Same for the base object, if I switch the mode to modifier stack base object instance, now I'm going to cycle between the four teapots that are instances of each other, but will no, never go to any of the teapots that are not related to this specific teapot. I would have to switch back to base object class in order to move between the objects that have uh, the same class, regardless of whether they are instances of each other or not.